Why do we want to teach nose breathing? Here at Sterling Structural Therapy, that is a practice that we ask for. There are many helpful breathing techniques for any number of therapeutic reasons, but I want to share with you today why simple daily application of nose breathing can profoundly affect your physiology and mental state for the long term. I'll introduce the basics of our autonomic nervous system and the Bohr effect and how increased carbon dioxide in the body helps offload oxygen into your tissues. First, the nose is meant for breathing. The mouth is meant for eating and talking. You may even be thinking, I already breathe through my nose, but what about during exercise, when you're exerting yourself, or overwhelm, when you begin to sigh, or even while sleeping. Ever wake up with a dry mouth or a scratchy throat? So your nose, it filters air. It regulates temperature and humidity. It starts the immune response. It manages the flow of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Ever start to get sick and your nose starts to get stuffy, so you start breathing through your mouth only to find out soon that your nose is completely stuffy? This is your nose trying to inhibit the flow of carbon dioxide exiting your body. It's also a pressure release valve that creates the ability for your lungs and your diaphragms to stay elastic. Let's talk about the science of breathing. You're breathing oxygen. The oxygen attaches to the molecule in the blood cell called hemoglobin. It acts as a sponge to pick up the oxygen, carries it through the vascular system to the tissues where your body has created carbon dioxide, an acidic environment from usage. The carbon dioxide attaches to the blood cell, literally creating a physical change that squeezes the hemoglobin and expels the oxygen. The oxygen then is released and free to move into the tissue cells. Everybody's fed, all is well. But what happens if the carbon dioxide levels decrease due to mouth breathing? Well, the tissues are hungry. They're hungry for oxygen. So your body thinks it needs more oxygen. So you start deep breathing and breathing more rapidly, likely through your mouth, further disrupting the internal pH balance inside of your body, inhibiting the oxygen to actually move into your cells, creating low levels of hyperventilation. The first muscles that begin to spasm because of the lack of oxygen are the smooth muscles of the bronchioles and the gastrointestinal tract. Think of asthma or digestive issues. That's why the majority of asthma attacks occur first thing in the morning because they're breathing through their mouth all night. Obviously, if your body is starving for oxygen, the sympathetic survival response is triggered. There's a problem. Another example is what do first responders gives a person that are having a anxiety attack or a panic attack? They give them a paper bag to breathe into, not simply to distract them, but to actually build up the carbon dioxide levels in the system again to allow their body to get the oxygen. Our breathing reflects our internal state and can alter it. So the nervous system has two basic branches, the sympathetic, fight, flight, and freeze. This is our unconscious response to a threat. It's biologically ancient because we would not have survived this physical world without it. Think about the tiger coming after you. This is for emergencies. Then there's the parasympathetic state which is our intended daily state, where we rest, digest, enjoy pleasure, and engage socially. These two are in constant flux. Think of the sympathetic state as a state of alert, a state of stress. 
Stress I'm defining as anything that asks you to adapt or change, which in itself is not a bad thing. It can be the tiger or it can be a new idea. The problem arises when we're unable to resolve that problem and we end up in a chronic state of stress. Breathing is our only autonomic process that we can voluntarily change. That's 20,000 opportunities daily to reset our central nervous system. This is a powerful tool in stress management. In conclusion, to be most energy efficient, breathe through your nose, even when you're exercising, especially in stressful situations, unless you're being chased by the tiger, please save yourself. This will not be easy to master. You will have to get used to the feeling of air hunger and a little bit of claustrophobia as your pH levels change and your carbon dioxide levels rise. But the rewards are sustainable means to your mental, emotional, and physiological health. As my teacher said to me and his teacher told him, you should eat through your nose as often as you breathe through your mouth.